All right, so have you seen this Yanny Laurel thing? I saw something about it, but I refused to click on it. No, I'm going to play it for you. You tell me what I you hear. I don't want to hear it. I'm going to play it. All right. Your TC radio is boring. I heard Laurel. It's a freaking podcast, dude. What do you want? You, you cut, right? Hey guys, welcome to Questions Over Coffee. Today I wanted to say that I am drinking Misty Valley again from our friends Avoca out of Fort Worth. Check them out if you're interested. This is a awesome single origin coffee from from regions of Ethiopia I cannot pronounce. Let's go with that. All right, so first question today involves our Turnquick, and if you are familiar with the Turnquick pouch, you will realize that it is now available in colors, and that is the first question from Vicenjo. Vicenzo, Vince, I'm saying that all. Hi, what is it? Vincenzo. Vincen Vincenzo. Italian. It's an Italian on the, on the Facebook. Hey guys, love your med pouches. When are you going to drop the Turnquick pouch in multicam on us? It's hot, it's dropped, get it in the store right now. So, if you're not familiar with our Turnquick pouch, we've made a couple of changes on them and actually just one change. So, they, we did have an embroidered TQ logo on the front of each of the removable panels, uh, but now we've changed that to have a little loop field and a removable PVC patch now that is included with each Turnquick pouch. So, we did that for versatility and also it just allows you to remove the branding on the outside of the pouch if you need to use it for something other than a tourniquet. Um, however, we'd recommend you stick with the tourniquet, uh, tourniquet in the tourniquet uh, because of the versatility that it affords you. So it is the first, and it's patent pending, device on the market to quickly release a tourniquet and deploy it at the same time. So not only does it save you time, you can actually deploy the tourniquet. Now it's ready to apply right from the tourniquet pouch. So, um, it does deploy the two most common uh, tourniquets on the market and the two recommended tourniquets by the Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care, which are the CAT and the Soft T-Wide. Um, those are do fit and do deploy from the tourniquet pouch. So, also got our four-way mounting system on the back and it can mount to a backpack strap vertically or horizontally on a belt. The options are endless. There's four ways to mount it. You won't run out of ways to mount it. There's also a long mouse clip included to um, actually mount that on Molly or PALS webbing as well. So very versatile. It now comes in Ranger Green, Coyote, Multicam, and of course black with the new PVC patch on the front. So that is the big news for today. And moving on with the questions. Now I can drink some coffee. Next question. I'm, I still can't see that in that name. Vin, Vincenzo? Is that how you say it? Yeah. All right. Will Z. I'd love to see a gear tasting about current list of skills you have developed so far, which you think are the most important, what you're currently working on, want to learn in the future. So that's a pretty loaded question, a very lengthy discussion. Um, even though I get long-winded here on gear tasting, I'm not going to really tackle that super long. I will say that I feel like our core skills that, that we've done a really good job at providing content for and, and education for are things like lock picking, knot tying, um, we've done a lot of climbing uh, slash rappelling type articles on the site. Um, I feel like kind of situational awareness uh, mindset is really kind of huge with us too on the site. Um, let's see, those are some, some main ones. I would also probably put, let's see. Yeah, those are, those are kind of like my top four, I would say, that we kind of cover on the site. Medical is also obviously a huge thing for us, too. Um, we try to provide medical um, informational and educational articles as well on, on ITS. So those are kind of the big ones. As far as me personally, um, this kind of ties into the next question, too. So I'll kind of tackle them both at once because it's really kind of the same discussion here. So uh, the next question comes in, and is if you could dedicate your free time to practicing only one skill, what would it be? So the problem with that is it's pretty subjective. And I mean, Will, your question wasn't necessarily subjective, but um, if, if I was going to practice one thing, it's subjective because I'm different than, than anybody else trying to learn a skill out there. Like my level, I mean, I've been tying knots for years and years and years. So knot tying is not something that I would necessarily 
practice on a regular basis just because I have a pretty good foundation with it. Um, there's still knots that I can't tie to save my life uh, via memory, uh, but there are quite a few that I can, I can do and I don't really need to focus on that too much. So I've got enough down to where I feel like they're a kind of a core group of knots that I know and that I can tie with my eyes closed. So that's kind of where I feel my skill level is in terms of that. Uh, but when it comes to things like lock picking, yes, I have practice to do. I don't think I'll ever be some expert at lock picking, um, even though I'm fairly good um, as the guys at Muster, what, two years ago now or last year, last October, found out I got stuck on the first lock in a little training exercise we were running. So like everybody was moving through this, picking like five different locks. Uh, Matt Fiddler from Sear Pick was running a course and everybody Got a pretty good time on it, but I got hung up on the first lock and I didn't give up, but it literally took me 15 minutes to open it. And then all the other four locks were just like bam, bam, bam. So it's just lock picking is a very subjective skill too, in a sense that it takes a lot to, to train that skill and you really have to practice. I don't know. I can't say for sure that practicing was what stumped me. I think sometimes you just get locks and sometimes you don't. It's just kind of one of those skills. So the more you practice, obviously, the better you become. Um, but I think, you know, if I was going to spend my free time practicing one thing like that, uh, I think it would really be working out. I don't think that's necessarily a skill in itself. However, I, I would argue that it is. Um, I think it's an important life skill. I think it's something that um, is probably one of the fastest things to go away when you stop it. Uh, meaning that you, your muscles start to atrophy immediately once you stop working out. And if you don't, you know, repeat that and get that repetition in, um, you will use it or lose it, so to speak. So that's just like any skill. However, if I was going to dedicate myself to something like that, it would definitely be that. Um, and also eating well, too. I've really been focusing on that the last year. Uh, Kelly and I have been on that wired to eat kind of modified paleo thing for close to a year now. In August, it will be a year. So I'm coming up on that anniversary, which is pretty big for me. Um, but, you know, I've dropped 20 pounds. I feel great. So I don't know. It's probably a tie between those two. And even though that's not necessarily like a, a common skill you would think of, I think there's probably two of the most important things that you can do with your time and focus on. So that's my spiel on that. Um, those are the questions I have today for questions over coffee. Hopefully you enjoyed it. You can pick up the Turnaquick pouches in these new colors on the store starting today, store.itstactical.com. We'll get you there. We have a big banner in the front. You can't miss them. Uh, new colors out today. And as always, if you have questions, use the pound tag you're tasting on any social media network, and we'll get your questions answered here on the show or on our radio program, Gear Tasting Radio. Thanks for watching.